So many of the problems that we deal with in the public sector are what my colleague Land Pritchett calls wicked hard problems. These are problems that involve many different agents and have many different parts to them. Oftentimes I think people don't deal with these problems because they're so wicked hard. Uh, in the literature people call them meta problems, which means that they're problems with many other problems hidden, hidden within them. I just like to call them quicksand, which means essentially when you take people into that problem they're easily going to get stuck. And if they get stuck, they're going to get disillusioned. And if they get disillusioned, you're not going to get any change. So one of the key things you want to do when you have a wicked hard problem is you want to have very, very basic instruments that help you break down the wicked hard problem so that you can make it something that people can actually deal with and that they can feel confident about. Now, when I work in places, I use the most simple tool out there. It's called an Ishikawa diagram or a fishbone diagram. Some people call it a problem tree. The first thing that I do is I ask people to define what the problem is. And I'm going to use an example from a country where I worked recently of maternal mortality. And they would say, well, the problem is that our maternal mortality rate is at a certain number. And it's too high. And then I'll say to them, what do you think is causing the maternal mortality rate to be that high? And this is the first time that people have been able to have a conversation in the room without having to argue about the cause. Because usually people have to identify the one thing that matters and they fight about that. So you'll find the people working in the hospitals who are looking for resources for the hospitals will say, we don't have enough beds in the hospitals. And then the people who work maybe with the ambulances will say, we don't have enough ambulances and then you end up fighting. And I say to them, why don't we just put both of those on the board? So let's say this is the head of the fish and these are the bones and one of them is about access to hospitals. One of them is about access to ambulances. Then other people in the room start to realize that they can actually put their ideas up there and they say, well, how about local traditions that don't allow women to go to the hospitals? They say, well, that's interesting. Let's put local traditions here. Then other people will say, well, it could also be the fact that the women go to the hospitals, but they go too late in their, in their pregnancy so that if there is any complication in the pregnancy, they're arriving when the baby is coming and when they are already in deep, deep danger. They're not going in the first few weeks or the first few months. Now what I'll do with the group is I'll start breaking these down and in each one I'll find sub-causes as well, which allow you to really break the problem down and have a look at it. And now you're not dealing with one meta problem, one huge quicksand. You're dealing with a lot of different parts. Then I'll say to people now, how about we go down and we say, well, use some, use some uh, uh, sticky notes to, to tell me which of the problems you think you have any ideas about solving. And I'll say, you know, go and put them on there. And people will put them on there. And you'll see already that people start to identify that maybe this is a place where we can deal with things and these other places are not so proximate for our solutions right now. Using these kinds of diagrams, these kinds of processes, very, very easy way to turn gigantic problems into problems that you can deal with, problems that you can solve, problems that you can mobilize attention around. It's very important that we deconstruct problems in this way so that we can actually break into them and solve them.